makes a good leader? Well, there are many things, and uh, they can come together in different combinations at different points in time. It's not just, not just a standard, in my view. Um, but some of the essential characteristics of great leaders are, first of all, I think a, a real curiosity about the world. If you're not curious about the world, what's going on around you, you're not going to be e able to engage with the people in the world, and part of those people are the people you're trying to lead, whether it's as a businessman or a politician or whatever. Uh, second, I think it flows from that that you have to also be interested in people. Um, I don't believe any longer in the world in which we live today that you can lead people simply from your position. I am the boss, therefore you will follow what I say. People won't do that anymore. They need to engage with you in an emotional sense. They need to be inspired. It's an old-fashioned word, but that's how it is. They need to believe in the vision that you're putting in front of them. They need to be certain that you believe in it deep down, that it's not just rhetoric, uh, and then engage in that journey together. Uh, and if you're not prepared to do that, not prepared to put yourself on the line, take risks, serious risks, uh, then people will not follow you. And there's nothing worse than a leader who has no followers. Uh, then there's courage. And you, you have to be courageous as a leader. You have to be able to set out a vision. You know that in five years' time you won't have achieved it all. Things will have changed. Uh, and there will be lots of people around who say, you know what, you got that wrong. you just got to be prepared for that. Accept it is how it is. You've got to take tough decisions. You uh, would like to think that uh, a really, really great leaders uh, are respected, but they don't have to be popular. And if they seek popularity at the expense of, of respect, then they'll probably fail because they'll take the wrong decisions. Because there are quite a number of decisions that leaders have to take, which are about the reality of the position they find themselves in, uh, which are not popular at that moment in time. And I think we suffer a little bit from this in our politics just now, that the political cycle is so short, uh, and particularly with 24-7 media, uh, everybody's rushing after the shortest term rather than having a vision as to what they need to do to build for the long term. But that takes real deep courage. Um, and many other characteristics we go on about, but I, if you want to get to the essentials, I would also say then a deep sense of responsibility. You're responsible for a group of people, you're responsible for a company, you're responsible for a country. Uh, that's a heavy responsibility. You have to be prepared to take that, you have to be prepared to deal with it, not personalize it, uh, and then you have to be, above all, prepared to hold yourself accountable for the actions which you have asked others to take. Ultimately, the buck has to stop with you. People talk a lot about CSO, corporate social responsibility. These days. I don't like the phrase because I think it suggests that that is something outside your business or periphery to your business. It's something which is nice to do when you can afford to do, when you have the time to do. Uh, I take, and, and I'm in my experience in Unilever and the experience of, if you like, the genetic involvement with Unilever uh, in its history has taught me, and I hope others, that unless you are being a constructive, engaged member of the communities in which you operate, you will not long-term sustain your business. You can't have a, a successful business in a broken society. That's not to say that we have to do the job that politicians and the political structure has to do, but we have to engage with our own people, we have to engage in the communities where we operate, and we have to be seen to do that in a constructive, if you like, an enlightened self-interest way, but it has to be both enlightened and it has to be, and it is in the interest of your business. Now, if I can give you an example of that from in, in my Unilever days when I was talking to young people coming into the business, uh, I would say to them, remember you've joined a, you've joined a consumer marketing business. Uh, at the heart of it, people would say our brands, uh, whether it's Purcell or Flora or Dove, these are the brands that make the business. But those brands are not owned by us. They're owned by our consumers, uh, and our consumers are citizens, and those citizens live in communities. If you then, as a company, are not an engaged, constructive, and positive member of that community, over time, you will lose the respect of the citizens in that community, and then it will follow that you will lose the support of those citizens as consumers of your brands. So it is absolutely at the heart of business, and of course businesses can get away with not applying themselves in this area for three years, five years, maybe ten years, maybe even longer. But businesses who are determined to build and be sustained over time, generation after generation after generation, have to behave in this way to get the support uh, from their consumers 
who are the citizens in the communities they operate in? Uh, no, I think more and more businesses are. Some are doing it for absolutely the right reasons because they see it as, as being for their business sake. It's right at the core of the business. It's, it's central to their strategy. Others are doing it as an add-on, and I think ultimately that, that fails. Um, and, and you require a real understanding of why you're in business and how the community supports you to understand how you have to serve the community. And I'd apply it in a more personal sense. Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about business leaders and whether they're paid too much or not, and, and that's, a, that's a separate debate. But one of the things I'd say that not, not enough business leaders uh, accept that they have a responsibility as a business leader also to the broader community. Uh, we're not paid these mega bucks that we are paid uh, simply to do the narrow job of making that business profitable for its shareholders. We have a broader remit uh, and in time if we don't address that broader remit and follow it through with real understanding and enthusiasm, society will withdraw from us the license to operate either as businesses or indeed as leaders of those businesses.